Hello and a very well, a warm welcome to our new series of Design Dates. I'm Claire German, Managing Director of Design Centre Chelsea Harbour. In this virtual format, we're keeping our community engaged and inspired wherever they are. We're bringing together designers and industry insiders for some great conversations online. Through the power of technology, we have a panel of experts from different worlds, interior design, textiles, and from Spain, an award-winning spa. I'm delighted to introduce Bernie de la Quania, founder of de la Quania, architect and interior designer, Shalini Misra, and Alejandro Batella, vice president of Shah Wellness Clinic. This promises to be a pertinent topic of discussion as we explore how our homes and lifestyle can make an impact on our well-being. And who better to moderate the session than Henrietta Thompson? With so much to talk about, there may not be time for questions and answers. So without further ado, I'm handing over to Henrietta and thank you all for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claire, and welcome to, um, to all, of, all of you, um, all of you who have tuned in to, um, to watch this discussion and of course to our amazing panelists, Bernie, Shalini and Alejandro. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled to be having this conversation with you today and wellness, uh, I mean, what could be a more pertinent, bigger topic in 2020, you know, the last months of 2020, this has been one, uh, I need to watch my language here, but you know, it has been one crazy year and, um, and you know, wellness obviously has been uh, a growing topic really for you know for for some time now even before the madness that um and the unpredictability of 2020 however um i think you know now with all of this this um time for reflection time spent indoors but also all of the challenges that we're facing to our uh, physical health but also our mental health wellness has never been more pertinent um so i'm very i'm very um happy to be able to to be you know moderating this discussion but talking to you all experts in very different um, in very different ways on this subject so we're looking at we're looking at how the interior can impact our um, our state of mind and our, our well-being about how um, how the the hospitality environment can um, how we can take cues from that particularly um, and the directions that the whole wellness um, arena is moving into. Um, and of course, actually, on a, on a much more um, immediate note, you know, the textiles and the products that we surround ourselves with as well. And so I have so many questions for all of you, but I think possibly the best way to start is for um, each of you to introduce your own angle to this topic. Um, so I'd particularly like to, to welcome Alejandro. Um, so as vice president of the Shah Wellness Clinic, you have a particular take on this subject. Um, and I would, I, I think we should, we should start by perhaps um, if you could introduce the spa um, and your approach to this subject um, and take us through some of your images. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Henrietta. It's a pleasure to be uh, with all of you today. Uh, I agree with you that it could be a more appropriate uh, subject. No, I think if if we have discovered something on these uh, months is how important our health is and how important our homes are as well. No? So uh, at the end of the goal, this is, this is what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, SHA, it's a, it's a global uh, reference in terms of health and well-being uh, that started for a personal experience of my father. Uh, he recovered from a very serious illness 18 years ago and this is what he moved us uh, to share with others uh, how important it is uh, to achieve the best version of yourself, uh, considering health not only as the absence of illness, but really an optimal balance in terms of uh, well being, uh, brain activity, vitality, from a physical, social, mental, emotional, spiritual uh, dimension. No? Uh, so at the end of the day, we need to work in harmony to be truly well, mind, body, and spirit. Uh, likewise, wellness, uh, real estate, or wellness uh, development, uh, it's, it's key on this aspect. No? I think we've all seen a big evolution uh, in wellness, hospitality, especially in the last 10 years, and we don't understand uh, anymore 
uh, wellness as just pampering or relaxation, but more as a, an inflection point in, in our lives, you know, a constant evolution in terms of uh, taking care of uh, ourselves. Um, I think we, are, we have advanced on so many fields on the last 50 years, but we've gone backwards in terms of nutrition, in terms of lifestyle, and we've been seeing uh, the results of that. I think on every family, we have a case of someone that is suffering or cancer or heart diseases or diabetes. And we are seeing a new generation uh, that doesn't want to wait to feel those consequences to make changes on their lives and that are willing every day to learn more about uh, what can we do to prevent it? What can we do to achieve uh, our full potential uh, to enjoy life with more plenitude. Uh, and at the same time, I think we want to take uh, better, better advantage of our free time. No? We spend a lot of time uh, working. and uh, When we have free time, we think about how we can capitalize it. Uh, and definitely to take care of uh, ourselves should, uh, should take a, a, a centric role uh, on that. Um, at the end of the day, in terms of real estate, we're talking uh, of uh, everything that can help us from sun, light improving, maximizing natural light, increasing exposure to nature, uh, using circadian lights. At the end of the day, I think there are three things that make us be what we are. One is genetics that we cannot control that much. The second one is lifestyle, nutrition, exercise. And the third one is our environment. So this is what we're going to talk today. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I, I think we have so much more to discuss than we, you know, we have time for really. So I'm going to, I'm going to move swiftly on to Bernie. And, um, and Bernie, perhaps you can give us an introduction to your extraordinary new textile range. Thank you, Henrietta. Thank you for inviting me. Um, Yes, well, Delacanya, for those of you who don't know, is a company that produces fabrics for interiors, um, specifically linen, using the finest, finest natural fibers that we can find. And we produce all our products in Europe. The company is really a reflection of who I am, because I grew up in South Africa and I was very influenced by the environment, being outside, being healthy, being in nature, um, you know, the happiest time I could ever have was being in the African bush. So the company now continues and really just reflects that. And it's, it's a bit of a myth to think that natural needs to be sort of shabby chic. It isn't, it can be extremely elegant. So all of our fabrics and all of our accessories are made of natural fibers and we do use others. So we use cashmere, we use wool, we use silk, but predominantly linen. And this new collection, which you just mentioned, Henrietta, is really just an extension of that. It's a 100% organic linen interiors collection which I believe is the first one um, on the market. And we decided for this collection is that we would be certified to the highest standards, which are the GOT standards, which means Global Organic Textile Standard. The reason we did that, it was very difficult to, to achieve this, especially during the lockdown. But the reason that we did that, because this certification takes into account social responsibilities, environmental responsibilities, and also um, the product. So this collection, as you can see, is quite ethereal and it's elegant, it's soft, and very, I think, Alejandro, you might agree with me, it's quite spa-like in its, its freshness and elegance and also the color palette. Totally agree. Thank you. <laughs> And it is absolutely, you know, especially when you when you really see it in person, it's really quite quite stunning. There's something something very um, uh, just very special about it when you when you really touch it and see it in person. It's really quite extraordinary. And these images are all beautiful. Every single image we've seen so far. So, uh, Shalini, I mean, moving quickly to you, um, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about um, your design and architecture practice, and particularly how. Um, 
you know, in relation to into in relation to wellness, how that how that fits in with your design practice. Well, I think when I take up a project, it's a huge responsibility because we are creating a lifestyle for people. It's, it's a home environment we are creating and people are going to live there. So instead of injecting a certain style, one of the most important criteria for me is to inject a spirit of wellness, a spirit of joy, a spirit of happiness, so that people who are living in this environment actually thrive in that space. So I use various techniques to do that. And uh, impact is one of them with my architectural training for many, many years. I like to play with volumes. So in this image, you can see there's a double height volume. And then uh, there is a smaller sitting room above and a larger dining area below. There's a huge sculpture of Tony Cragg, which is oversized. And there's a lot of craftsmanship going around. There's a lot of art, which I, which I believe is really lovely for people because it's interesting. People enjoy, you know, being intrigued. People enjoy seeing um, different environments. So we try to bring a lot of nature inside because one of, uh, we have a few strategies for wellness. One of them is biophilic design, which is basically bringing indoor, outdoor nature, the connection between each other. Here you can see there's, um, there's this market tree at the back wall uh, next to the dining room. It has wooden, um, wooden marquetry and it has a woodland spirit. There are trees, there are mountains, there's, there's nature being brought up, brought inside. The other thing we use is lighting, different forms of lighting. Natural light, of course, like here you see, uh, as soon as you enter a room, you are always drawn towards the source of natural light. Most probably it's a window. And um, I think natural light is fantastic for our body circadian rhythm. So we try to maximize it as much as possible. And we also play a lot with artificial light. Like you can see the chandelier, you can see the art on the wall and there are task lights, which are the down lights, which are speci specially lighting the photography art, the, the floor lamps. So different levels of lighting are really important uh, as well for, for our body needs. We play a lot with color, chromotherapy, because we find colors have a huge impact in our body system. So um, various colors are used for various uh, reasons, like red is very good for creativity, it's passion, it's blue is more calming. Um, so we, we try to use a lot of psychology with colors. We use a lot of materials and as much as possible, we use sustainable materials um, and we try to bring as much of upcycling, recycling in our projects. In this image, it's a basement of a house, but you don't feel as if it's a basement because there's a light well and there's the green wall where, where the nature is brought inside. And then there is sculpture, which, which makes an impact, which is hanging from a ceiling on top of an indoor basement swimming pool. The pattern is black and white. So the colors are quite stimulating in, in a space that could be quite dark and gloomy. We have, um, we couldn't get too much natural light. We have one skylight in which we've put mirrors because mirrors are a great way of bouncing light in and out. We have barisol light. I'm a huge fan of barisol light. It's an artificial light, but it always feels that it's a skylight. It's a stretch ceiling system of lighting. Um, a lot of different materials we use. There's um, teak wood from, um, from sustainable sources. There's natural marble, there's, um, there's lots of play of different textures because people like to feel. It's playing with emotions, it's playing with moods. And I think that's what creates wellness because if, you, if you're in a space that's jarring your senses, if the space is not organized, um, you know, there's clutter. So we try to do exactly the opposite effect and we, we try to give a lot of emphasis on the spatial planning. So there's a feeling of well being, there's a feeling of happiness. So it's not really the style that we go for but it's the client's lifestyle that we try to address in our projects. Fantastic, thank you. So um, I have a long list of questions that I'd like to ask all of you. And, um, and in particular, actually, um, you know, the, just, just looking at some of these projects just now, and, you know, it really brings home the importance of um, art, as you say, and nature and, um, and light, particularly in the in when you know when you're creating environments that really make you feel um, better. Shalini, do you do you um, 
are those really the key elements to you? Do you do you think you know so art, nature, light, um, uh, a kind of a, a holistic uh, sense of of being, I guess, part of the environment and the outside world and nature? Absolutely, Henrietta. These are my my fundamental uh, principles that I use. Uh, the other one I would add is ergonomics, comfortable, because I think um, comfort is the key, especially now during uh, COVID times, we spend a lot of time on our chairs, sitting or sleeping. You know, We spend a lot of time sitting, doing Zoom calls or doing our work, or we spend a lot of time sleeping. So, uh, so what are the right materials for a mattress? What is the right posture for you while you're sitting. These are the things that are really important. And then, you know, organizing the space very well so that things are not lost. You, you have space for everything else. Um, and, and as you said, nature, nature is really important. If you, if, if you can have, like, I can see beautiful indoor plants behind, behind you, which I, which I love. Um, and studying indoor plants are really important because some indoor plants give oxygen at night, like aloe vera. So it's nice to use it in the bedroom. And whereas some give oxygen during the day, so it's nice to use it outside. So there are lots of tricks that you can do with wellness in your interiors. And I, I, I'm sure we'll come back to all of those as well as we as we go through this discussion. Um, so just just going back to the beginning, you know, and, and um, how wellness has become a priority for so many of us in recent years. Um, I'm interested as to, and perhaps Alejandro, you could expand on this a little bit more, I mean, even before um, life changed for so many of us this year, wellness has been a growing issue. And you touched on that a little bit earlier. Um, and But I'd, I'd, I'd like to go into it in a little bit more detail. Like why do you think it has, you know, our, our health and well-being has become such a priority of late? Well, you know, um, today you buy any electronic uh, you get so much information about how to use it. But unfortunately, uh, we don't come with that information. Uh, we don't know how to uh, make a better use of our body, how to take uh, better care of our organism. So basically, we are being educated by what we see in television, in advertising, uh, and we assume uh, that knowledge as uh, correct. Um, then, let's say on the first half of our life, we feel that whatever we do doesn't have big consequences, doesn't impact our health and well-being. It doesn't matter what we drink, what we take, what, what we eat. And then usually on the second half of our life is when we start feeling those consequences. And even in that time, in majority of cases, we don't relate that to our lifestyle. And actually in conventional medicine, it's rarely that a doctor asks you nowadays when you go for whatever health issue, how is your diet, how is your lifestyle? Um, so I think this is being for one side has been an uh, humility lesson for conventional medicine. Um, and then it's a call to action for society, no? Uh, first, you only uh, value enough something when you have the risk of missing it. Huh? Mm -hmm. And I think we have all value more uh, our health in these circumstances. And second, I think it's a call to action from the point that we see that we have a responsibility in our health and well being, that we cannot just do whatever we like and then whenever we have an issue, uh, go to a doctor and expect uh, the solution. But uh, to prevent, uh, to adopt an ideal and optimal uh, lifestyle. You know, it's interesting, uh, when we started, on, started working on, on, on creating SHA, we expected the majority of our clientele uh, that was going to visit us, it was going to be on a senior age, and mainly with health issues, mainly women, uh, what we have discovered, and this is something that has been uh, evolving, is that average age is getting younger and younger, people who want to take care of themselves. At the moment, average age at CHA is around 43, 45 years old. We have equal percentage of men and women that uh, wants to take care of themselves. And then I will say that 
majority of our guests, definitely more than 50% of our guests, are on a pretty, who, on a pretty good health uh, condition, you know, are pretty fit. And it's not people that are looking to solve uh, immediately a problem, more, but more looking forward to prevent, to learn more uh, about themselves, um, and really to take better advantage of, of their life, you know, to enjoy life with more uh, plenitude. Um, and I think this is definitely what it has to move us. No, uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we we're talking about the different aspects that influence what we are. Definitely, uh, it's very important if we are talking about wellness, real estate, wellness developments. It's very important the construction, the materials, the natural lighting. That's one aspect. Another aspect is uh, to encourage its residents to actively uh, behave in ways that you promote a uh, healthy living. Uh, so to have the possibility to, to access uh, from natural therapies, healthy nutrition, uh, to have a good medical offer uh, on place or nearby. Then uh, policies, non-smoking, recycling, uh, programming, different activities. And then it's about moving from me to we, and this is a very important part uh, because it's about creating a community. Uh, and that feeling of community makes things uh, much easier. And this happens when you come to Shah and you're sharing with time, your time with another 100 guests that have similar goals and similar interests, but also hap happens on the wellness or healthy living communities that we can see uh, around the world. I believe it's much easier to evolve, to maintain a, li a lifestyle when you have others around uh, with similar goal, similar uh, approach to life. Yeah, and I think actually on that note, so I was going to ask um, all of you really about how the focus has changed this year um, specifically. And I think one of, although, you know, Shalini, you mentioned, you know, how, um, how ergonomics have been particularly um, put in focus in our own homes as we spend more time sitting and working from home and so on, but also this idea of, um, of a sense of community, as you say, Alejandro, and so important. Um, the Having others around us um, and having those connections and human connections are, are, so, are so vital. And I think that's really come very sharply into focus. Is there anything else that um, that this year has particularly changed when it comes to interior design? Um, that's really for all of you. Well, if I can jump in, I think it really has focused, pe focused people's minds on what they're actually bringing into their homes. I think, you know, first of all, there was the, the movement to organic food and that has evolved and then fashion fashion really latched on to the fact of using organic cotton, for example, for t-shirts. But I think interiors has come lost because you imagine when you're in your bedroom and you're surrounded by fabrics, that's an awful load of fabric. And if that fabric was produ produced using harmful chemicals, they would emit toxins which you would breathe in. And some of the pictures which you'll see that, that I've, I've given to you, Henrietta, you can see it's so important for me to give our customers the opportunity to prioritize their health and well-being in their own home. And that's become much more important since the virus emerged, I think. You know, um, I know, for example, if people use these particular fabrics, there are no harmful chemicals being um, emitted. So I think it's perfect for children's rooms, for spas, for, for anybody wanting to prioritize their health. And the way that actually came about was because I have been working in this industry for 26 years now. And along the way, I realized that there, there's not a lot of legislation in some countries as to what you can actually put into the production of fabrics. So there are a lot of fabrics being produced using harmful chemicals and we in our homes don't know that and we are breathing in those toxins and i think as as was mentioned earlier you know environment is so much part of our health and well-being so what i can concentrate on and what i've seen the change in is people are actually thinking about that and asking questions 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, in the, in the broader environment and the, you know, the, the, the sort of environmental consciousness of what we're, what we're bringing into our homes and not just, um, not, not just the, the high levels of toxins that are in a lot of the, the products that we do surround ourselves with knowingly or unknowingly, largely unknowingly. Um, but also, you know, the importance of actually taking care of the planet at large has, a huge impact on our own personal well-being. I'd like to explore that a little bit more as well. I think there's been a huge, um, people have become really careful and I think the younger generation, like my, my daughter who's 14, they are absolutely, that generation I find are very, um, you know, they really want to change the world. They, a lot of them are going vegetarian. Um, my daughter started a business called Upcycle Me, where she uses recycled fabrics, makes T-shirts and draws cartoons of endangered, endangered animals. So I think that, that, that part will really grow. And I find uh, increasingly in homes, people don't want to use mass produced things. They want to use specially crafted things, you know, hair, heirlooms, which will go down generations. So that whole act of just going and shopping and buying, filling up your houses with stuff is gone. There's there's a lot of emphasis on craft, crafting things and procuring things which will last a long time. Um, and, and luckily now, I think because of this emphasis, there's a lot of technology being used for producing leather alternatives. Some, some I know in Netherlands, they're using yeah. fruit to, to make it into, into leather. Linoleum, which is fabulous, made out of linseed oil. That's, that's a great material to use for, um, for surfaces. There's um, bamboo, which is a really fast growing plant. It grows, um, you know, in 24 hours, it goes three meters and it's very light and easy to transport. So, so it's, 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 it's important to look at different materials which we can use in our interior life. Mm. Fantastic. Um, Obviously, design and interior design is absolutely crucial when it comes to hospitality, and I think probably never more so than uh, than in a spa environment. Um, in what ways do you think that people can take interior design cues from the hospitality world when it comes to their own homes? That's probably one for Alejandro to start with. Can, can you repeat the question, please? <laughs> so, um, so I just think, saying about how important the... Um, the the design of a space is when it when it comes to hospitality and particularly in spas and I wondered whether there were um, whether there were particular things that people could, could cues that people could take from the world of hospitality when it comes to um, creating a more serene or, or um, wellness focused space in their own homes. Hmm. Well, we've mentioned some of them. No, I think the connection uh, outdoor indoor is uh, key to be connected with uh, with the outdoor. Uh, maximizing natural lighting is key. The use of colors is key and to look for that uh, serene environment that was one of our priorities when we designed our shine Spain and it continues being for the uh, common properties. Uh, a place that you don't get tired of, I'm sure it happened to any of you that you have arrived to this kind of fashion hotels that it's nice but it's everything too dark or and after one day, you really feel that you don't know why, but you cannot spend much time there. No, of course, it's important the sound, uh, the use of natural materials. Um, uh, of course, technology is key. Uh, mm -hmm. We've mentioned some of them, like uh, domotics, uh, using of circadian light, but something that we didn't mention, and it's going to be very important. In the, in the future homes, it's going to be about um, technology that can help us to um, uh, capacity of diagnosis. Uh, I really believe that in five to seven years time, we are going to have in our homes uh, a capacity uh, to diagnose ourselves similar to the one that a, a top hospital can have uh, nowadays. No? We are seeing already with our uh, health wearable devices uh, that are telling us every time more information about our, ourselves. Uh, and we see how the number of uh, health professional is growing much slower than the number of people who have health issues. 
So there is going to be a lack of enough health professionals to take care for everyone. And we are seeing, we're going to see how technology uh, comes a much more important role in healthcare and how we're going to have many of these technologies uh, in our homes. Uh, if you think about, for example, on uh, MRI, uh, uh, MRI machine nowadays, it costs you half million euro, uh, but uh, there is already a company in California that for 10,000 US dollars uh, has created a machine of the size of a hat that gives you a very similar information. Uh, this is where we're gonna see uh, in the future. No? We're gonna have in our homes, I'm sure you've seen it in some movie, a technology that is gonna give you key information about uh, yourself that will help you to adopt the best lifestyle. Fantastic, so exciting. Um, Bernie, do you think, what do you think are the biggest challenges really when it comes to, um, when it comes to really in, you know, incorporating some of these things into, into our spaces? I mean, perhaps we could talk about um, the Pure Collection a little bit more and, and your experience in bringing that to market as much as anything. I mean, did, did you come across any particular challenges? I think it's really difficult. And I think in terms of people choosing to use an organic, a truly organic fabric in their homes, I think people are, are unaware of, the, of what goes into producing a fabric. I think if people were a little bit more aware and at Delacanio, we are constantly trying to educate people into <clears throat> what to look for in a fabric. So I think, yes, it was really difficult to produce it. We were ready to launch it in early March, but of course then the virus hit. So, and I've been working on it for the last few years. So of course, then it was very difficult to get it in because we were working with mills who, for example, instead of being able to use conditioners to soften the flax, to soften the linen, they, all they could use is water. So really pure water. There aren't any chemicals which they could use would get, which would give us the result we wanted. So it was lots of experimentation. So that was, that was, a very, that was very tricky to produce, but I'm totally convinced that this is just the beginning. I know we have already worked on Pure 2, the next collection, but I'm sure as people are educated into what, it, what we're bringing into our homes and, if, and the effect that those products can have on our health and well-being, I'm sure they're all going to follow suit. So, you know, going for the GOT certification, that was a really tough one. Um, taking into account the environment, taking all the re social responsibilities into account, and of course then the fiber. And you know, choosing linen because linen is such a fabulous fiber to work with because it doesn't take the amount of water that something like cotton would take. So it's been a real big experiment, but I'm now sure that if our customers choose this product, they're choosing something which is going to help them to prioritize their health in their own homes. And I think that the tricky thing is that there is not any legislation. I don't know, Shalini, if you've come across this. For example, in this country, we have fire retardancy. And you know, there's a big question around fire retardancy is that actually good for us to be breathing in those, those chemicals? So that sort of information will become more and more available to us and that will make us consider what we bring into our homes. So I think that's going to be a big change and something the virus has helped bring about. Absolutely. And, you know, I think we're, we're starting to talk a little bit more about the future here as well. So Shalini, I'd, I'd love to know, um, your thoughts on, on how we, you see the, the direction evolving really for interiors in the future. Um, so where, where is wellness going next? Oh, <laughs> that's a great question, Henrietta. I find now because a lot of people are working in their homes and um, open plan living was quite popular, but now I think people are valuing their space and you know Zoom calls, the noise, so, I find that open plan spaces now will need more division, which, which I often use. Um, I often have sliding screens. So like this image that you see, I have a, sc a screen that can close that, um, that you can see the tracks on the ceiling here. 
So you can close that whole area off with, with screens, which is quite a Japanese system, but obviously these are Italian doors, quite quite reversed, quite soundproof. And you just uh, screen one area off to the other. I call it addition through subtraction, where you can add or subtract spaces with these magical screens. So I find that that will have a huge uh, impact in interiors where spaces will need to be a bit more cozier. Um, and I think these screens are a great device to do that or, or make it bigger as, as you want it to be. Um, materials, I'm, I'm so, I um, can't wait to start uh, see a bunny or organic cotton and try and use it in various projects. I'm really excited to see that. So I think materials, the conscious effort of using the right materials will be definitely high up on the list. Uh, uh, this, sorry, sorry, yes, carry on. This, this image is um, of a bedroom. And um, again, in, in, in the blue, painting that you see, we've tried to use a lot of outdoor, indoor, it's uh, bringing plants inside, inside um, a room. Um, so different ways of using color, which I think really impacts um, a space. You know, there's a neutral background, the ceiling is painted and the bed linen is quite neutral, but then you have beautiful textures coming from, from the wood, the back of the wood. So I think just and, and lighting, I think there's up lighting, a pelmet lighting going all around the room. There's down lights, there's a beautiful chandelier in the ceiling. So just, just being playful with different lighting, with different materials, with different colors and creating the right environment, which is exciting and also really pleasant to be in. Absolutely. I mean, oh, one thing that, um, that has always struck me, um, I guess, as, as a journalist, when writing about this sort of thing, there seems to be a perception that um, that wellness or um, and environmentally friendly measures are something that can really only be afforded by the the very sort of high end of the the market. It's something that is um, is considered a luxury, and it shouldn't be. Um, Obviously, all of the projects we're talking about here are, um, you know, particularly prestigious and, you know, and, and luxury um, products and spaces. But can you can you see a time when this isn't the case, when when actually wellness is much more accessible? And perhaps, Bernie, this is one for you. Can you see a time when everyone can afford to have healthy organic fabrics in their homes or will it always be? Something well, thank that. you for asking me that, actually, because our this pure collection that we've launched, we were very, very careful to see that the price wasn't out of reach. So, of course, they're not inexpensive, but they're probably about two or three percent, absolutely maximum, more than an equivalent Delacanio fabric. So they're not outrageous. And we worked very hard with the malls to support them and to... Um, and to see that that could happen. I think that they will become much more accessible because as people realize the importance, I think more and more people will do them. And then there will be more and more yarns available because at the moment, only 1% of the linen production in the world is organic. So you can see it's at a real premium. But I think as people demand it and farmers start to grow more and more of it, of course, the prices will drop. And I think it's a little bit like organic food. I don't know if you remember in the beginning with organic food, it mm -hmm. was so really expensive. Um, and now it's about the same as anything else. So I think price wise, it's about you know, more and more people doing it and wanting it and the prices will come down. But again, ours is not outrageously priced. We tried really hard to keep it um, to a level. Fantastic. Um, and if you think of it, wellness is basically breath. It's basically meditation. It's basically, you know, very simple things that you can bring in your lifestyle, which yeah. is, which doesn't cost any money. It's just a habit. Hmm. I definitely agree with that. And it happens pretty much the same in terms of nutrition. We always think uh, that eating on a healthy way, it's more expensive. We think on organic uh, supermarkets. Yeah. Uh, but if you cut uh, from uh, your shopping list, alcohol, wine, uh, red meat, uh, refined sugar, processed food, 
uh, and then there are many healthy things that are cheap, as it is lentils, rice, uh, beans. Uh, of course, uh, buying organic fruits or organic vegetables, it's more expensive. But if you compare it with cutting so much animal protein or cutting alcohol, uh, I don't think really it's more expensive to eat healthy than, than to eat unhealthy or to eat on a regular way. Mm. And it, yeah. maybe, and maybe it really comes down to education as well at the end of the day, you know, and actually understanding what it is that, that we need. So mm. I think we have uh, maybe three more minutes on this call. So um, just as one final, um, one final question, which, which one thing would you all, um, which one change would you advise that people can, can make a small change that's quick and easy to make that would um, enhance their own environment um, in the in the most uh, well-being enhancing way. I would like to say that go for your gut feeling, what you really feel for. Now do it because now most people have a lot of time in their hands. You know, you're not traveling, you're not rushing around because of COVID. So I I would say let's listen to your inner voice and then then act according to that. That would be my take on wellness. That's a lovely tip. Thank you, Shalini. Bernie? You know, I think we should all just consider what we bring into our homes. It's as important as what we put into our bodies, but consider what are we bringing in? We don't need to buy tons of stuff. We just need to get the right products. And I think we just we need to consider and then understand what it is that we're allowing into our homes. Fantastic. That's lovely. Thank you, Bernie. Alejandro. Uh, well, I will say to take advantage of what nature offers us. And that's uh, applicable to everything, to nutrition, to selection of materials, to if we, if we have a location to choose, uh, think about the environment, the nature that surrounds us. Uh, definitely to take advantage of what nature has to offer to us. Fantastic. That's lovely. Well, on that note, I would like to thank you all so much for, uh, for, for joining us and joining this panel today. And thank you to everybody who has tuned in. Um, thank you, of course, to Design Center Chelsea Harbour for hosting us. And, um, uh, and may I just say to all of you, stay well. <laughs> and um, it has been such an inspiring, such an inspiring um, session talking with you all. So um, thank you so much. Thanks to you. Thank you, Henrietta. Thank you very much. Henrietta.